boy, man. Another LA Night story, and we are just days away from SummerSlam, the lamest party of the summer on Saturday night at Ford Field in Detroit, Michigan. Another LA Night story, and I know fans are getting upset and very impatient about what WWE is doing with LA Night, but if you've read recent reports, everything is going according to plan. WWE strategically is mapping out a push for LA Knight. Give me a break. Give me a fucking break, man. I don't believe a single word when they say something like that. If they have LA Knight now and they know he's hot, what are you waiting for? It's not like anything else is working on fucking television. Everything else is dirt boring. But we got LA Knight, who's over with the audience, and the fans genuinely want to see him. And WWE is doing nothing about it. There's a new report that's come out days before SummerSlam that there are people that are high on LA Knight. Sure, there are. There may be a couple, but there is also a group of people backstage that don't really see the appeal in LA Knight. And LA Knight doesn't factor into what they think is best for WWE television. There are a few pockets of people that think LA Knight is where he needs to be. He's extremely over and they notice it and they got these plans, these visions for him. He's extremely high on the list of things to get over on television. He's been praised within the company. Then there is a pocket of people, and these people have every right to feel this way, that are fearful with all the positivity surrounding LA Knight. There is fear that WWE will not strike while the iron is hot. With LA Knight, they will miss out on pushing LA Knight when he is at his most popular. Something the organization has been guilty of. With Brian Danielson, Matt Cardona, Braun Strowman, and several others that I'm sure I'm leaving off the list of names. WRKD Wrestling on Twitter tweeted out, and I quote, You can add that there are parties worried that the company won't strike. While the iron is hot and the momentum will fade as they've done with some in the past, end quote. I don't know what to tell you guys. I really don't. Are you tired of hearing about LA Knight? Are you frustrated that WWE's not pushing LA Knight? You guys want the lowdown? I've said this time and time and time again, and seemingly every time there's a report on a rumor regarding LA Knight, I say the same thing over and over and over again. I'm going to say the same thing here, but add something that I probably haven't told you yet, and I really want you guys to listen. I want it to catch on. L.A. Knight was not supposed to be on the WWE roster. Plain and simple. The guy would have been fired. He's lucky he even has a job. Now, with Vince McMahon's shadow looming over WWE creative, they really can't do much. If they get rid of L.A. Knight now, it's going to be looked at as, as a black eye for the company. Can't do it. Can't do it. Triple H is there. He's got some sort of say backstage. He goes from Max Dupree and the Maximum Male Models back to L.A. Knight. Let me tell you something. I don't know how many of you guys remember. WWE typically holds dark matches for NXT talent before SmackDown or before Raw. They called them into the venue and they get a closer look at them to see how they're progressing. And maybe a few months from that point or maybe six months to a year from that point, They'll revisit that, give them another shot, give them another opportunity to perform in front of a main roster audience, and then assess how they're coming along. They either stay back in NXT, they get fired, worst case scenario, or they get called up to the main roster. L.A. Knight worked a handful of dark matches before he got brought up to the main roster. He was L.A. Knight. He wasn't Max Dupree. He came out as L.A. Knight one day. During a dark match, he came out as Max Dupree, and he had this new character. Somebody filmed it, or it made main event. He came out, said that he would be unveiling a new group, these two maximal male models. There was this whole model search, and that's when the ball got rolling on his demise. But they called him up as L.A. Knight, and then they turned him into Max Dupree. Why did they do that? Because Vince and Bruce Pritchard never saw anything in L.A. Knight. They didn't. Why did they change his name? Because L.A. Knight was created on NXT. L.A. Knight wasn't created by Vince McMahon 
and his group of fucking clowns. That's why. If you don't believe it, I mean, the proof is in the pudding. It's happened how many fucking times? We've documented it how many different fucking times? How many times has a talent got brought up from black and gold back in the day to make the main roster and you thought that they would be a fucking knockout on the main roster only for them to fail and then they're gone six months later? Because they didn't have a hand in creating it. Vince has a hand in paying everybody because he's the one that signs the paychecks, but they didn't have a hand in the laboratory coming up with the recipe. Now we got LA Knight here. LA Knight's getting over. Do you honestly believe WWE, Vince McMahon, Bruce Prichard are going to look at LA Knight, take LA Knight from what he was in Max Dupree to where he is now, listen to the audience and push that man on television? If they do that, they're admitting failure. Vince didn't want to push LA Knight in the first place. Now you're going to expect Vince McMahon to push LA Knight now? If Vince pushes LA Knight, Vince is going to be looked at as wrong. When is Vince McMahon ever going to put himself in a position to be wrong? Now they created this battle royal. Money in the bank, they didn't give him money in the bank. I was okay with it. It went to Damien Priest. We all think Damien Priest is fucking great. He's having a fantastic year. I got no problem with Damien Priest winning the money in the bank. Then we get money in the bank ended. Then we get this United States Championship Invitational. He doesn't win that. We're thinking, all right, what are we doing with LA Knight at SummerSlam? He goes into SummerSlam, and then last week, WWE comes up with this SummerSlam Slim Jim Battle Royal. Here we go. Here we go. Then we get reports that WWE strategically is planning out and mapping out a LA Knight feud or an LA Knight push or something regarding LA Knight. They're going to give him a big push, but it's going to be a slow one and blah, 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 blah. He's high up on the uh, uh, management's lists and all this other nonsense that you got to fucking digest on social media. The point that I'm trying to make is WWE has to push LA Knight. They have to, but they're not going to push him all the way. WWE gives off the vibe, and you've heard Stephanie McMahon say it, you've heard Triple H say it, Nick Khan. The WWE Universe is the heartbeat of what we do, right? Stephanie's always went out there on panels and fucking interviews. We listen to the audience. No, they don't. They couldn't give a single solitary shit about what we have to say. They don't. That's the truth of the matter. But they need to do what they need to do to make sure that that statement is fulfilled. And if they don't push LA Knight, then they're going back on that statement. So they'll give you LA Knight in small little doses. They'll pretend that they're doing something with LA Knight so that you, the geek, the mindless idiot online, will think, oh, well, yeah, they're pushing LA Knight. This is going to be a great opportunity for him. Oh, he's going to be in the Battle Royal. Oh, he's at SummerSlam. That's what they want you to think. But in the reverse, if they don't push him, it's going to be blatantly obvious. They don't want to ever make that their plans are blatantly obvious. If they don't push him, then it's obvious that, you know, they're not going to do anything with him. But if they give you little morsels, they give you little bites here and there, then you'll think, oh, well, yeah, the plans are coming. The plans are going to be a slow burn. They can't go out there and just blatantly not push him. But the fact of the matter is the man got himself over the man made whatever decisions management in the past administration made look like shit. Now he got himself over, and he made all those people look stupid. Do you think Vince McMahon is going to take that lightly? No matter how much money this guy is going to make Vince McMahon, no matter how much shirts he sold, no matter how much of the audience loves this man more and more every single week, the more you hold him down, the bigger he will get. But WWE's plan is to push slowly but surely and then hope that it fades away. That's what their plan is. Their plan isn't to push LA Knight. Their plan isn't to get a title on him. He's not going to win the fucking Royal Rumble. He's not going to win the United States title. He's not going to win a world championship. They will give him slow pushes. They'll give him morsels along the way. And then WWE's mindset is, we'll push him slow and then hope that it fades out because we never wanted it to get this big in the first place. Sorry to be the bearer of bad news, folks, but that's exactly what's happening here. And it's not the first time that it's been done. 
if they realized what happened with Brian Danielson the first time, he would have automatically been in the WrestleMania main event and he would have won the Royal Rumble. He wasn't in the Royal Rumble. WWE had to rewrite plans to include Brian Danielson in the fucking Royal Rumble or WrestleMania, but while not including him in the Royal Rumble, they had to rewrite plans to get him in the main event of WrestleMania, which was great, but that took the long road to get there. And what did they do? They didn't listen to the fucking fans. It wasn't in their plans. It wasn't on their fucking list of things to do. They did not want Brian Danielson. The fans pushed Brian Danielson for WWE to act accordingly. I'm sorry. It's just the way it is. Same thing's happening with LA Knight. Now, if he gets pushed and he wins a championship, I'll apologize. I'll say, you know what? I was wrong. Finally, they did something. But it will be because of us that LA Knight is going to get where he goes. Because right now, I know for a fucking fact that internally, this guy, they're waiting for him to fade out, and that's what they want to have happen. They don't want to push him. They don't want him a part of anything. Because he is going against the agenda. And when you go against the agenda and get yourself over, then you are public enemy number one. You can't do that. Watch. We'll wait and see. Moving on. Speaking of pushes, Vince McMahon's not in charge, though. Sheamus. Sheamus came out and said that at Clash of the Castle, he had so much or- go- organic momentum. And then after that, it was wasted. Sheamus was interviewed with the Daily Star, and he discussed how he felt his momentum coming out of the Cardiff show, Clash of the Castle, how much momentum he had coming out of that. And then after that, completely wasted by WWE creative. He says, and I quote, I'm not upset about that at all, losing to Gunther at Clash of the Castle. I felt it was great. It's a great match. It was just the type of character Sheamus is, all fits and elbows. What I was upset about and what really bothered me was the creative after that. I came out of that with so much organic momentum, and it was just wasted. It didn't go anywhere. It was dead, and just like with WrestleMania, Drew McIntyre went away because he was injured, but I was ready to go, and then just nothing. There was no avenues and nowhere to go, and that's frustrating. I did the War Games thing, but that was shit. That's how I felt, though others might have felt differently. Sheamus is in the Battle Royal with LA Knight, and LA Knight and Sheamus are the only two names right now that have been confirmed for the SummerSlam Battle Royal. I'm, I'm assuming Shinsuke Nakamura and Bronson Reed and Tommaso Ciampa and guys like that. Uh, it will accumulate to 20 guys, I believe, in the SummerSlam Battle Royal. Vince McMahon's not in charge, though. I've said this how many times on Friday night when we were live after SmackDown. The Brawling Brutes were a priority in the Triple H administration for how long he was running the ship on his own. Pete Dunne was over. He was getting a little bit more push. They even, I mean, just look at what they were doing with Pete Dunne aesthetically. He was wearing a paper boy outfit. As soon as Triple H took over, the man was wrestling as he was the bruiser weights on Friday night. And now he's out there looking like a fucking paper boy again. Why? Rich Holland, they were all gelling. The Brawling Brutes were the number two faction in WWE during this time period. Everything was going in a direction of Sheamus taking the Intercontinental title off of Gunther. And somehow, some way, it got lost in translation. From Clash of the Castle, going into the later months, he didn't like the War Games match. I enjoyed it. I thought it was great. Obviously, it was all about the bloodline and Sami Zayn, but he played a small factor in that, Right? He was feuding with the bloodline. His guys were feuding with the bloodline. But it did go away after that. After that was over, goodbye. You didn't hear about Sheamus at all, man. There was like this dead period. Like, what are we doing? Is Sheamus going to get the shot at WrestleMania for the IC title? Everybody kind of figured that's where they were going. It took them a long time to get back there. And when they got back there, we all figured Sheamus would win the title at WrestleMania, and he did not. Now, I'm not complaining about that because I think Gunther has been tremendous and he should not lose that championship, but... You see where Sheamus has been on WWE television. He went from being a upper mid-level main event guy to basically AJ Styles, somebody that puts over younger talent. I mean, if you're Sheamus and you're working at this high level and Sheamus has been working his fucking ass off, he does not put on a bad match. He's carried some of the fucking load on both Monday and Friday. He had banger matches last year. Everything he did was quality. Only for him to be treated this way? Something did not go right there. 
something happened internally, creatively, you know exactly what I'm talking about. How can one administration take the brawling brutes and make them feel so good, and then all of a sudden, they are basically a non-factor on SmackDown? A non-factor. They're feuding with Pretty Deadly. If that tells you anything, it's WWE has no clear vision for the brawling brutes at all. At all. News on RVD. He made his debut on AEW Dynamite last night. Jack Perry versus RVD. Signed, sealed, and delivered for Dynamite next week, which will leave us two weeks to go before All In. This week, Jerry Lynn refused to get into the ring with Jack Perry because it would lead to child abuse, and a doctor won't clear him, so we called in a good friend who also worked for Extreme Championship Wrestling and outwalked RVD with Pantera's walk. His wife and fellow former Impact Wrestling star Katie Forbes was with him at Dynamite but stayed backstage. She did not show up on screen. And PW Insider reports that RVD is only slated for one match against Jack Perry. The match will happen, like I said, next week on Dynamite. It should be noted that WWE has been advertising RVD to be a part of their WrestleMania 40 weekend festivities in Philadelphia next year. Not that has that it has anything to do with RVD. I mean, if he wants to make a fucking short run out of this, he certainly could. But I'm glad that it's only one match. And I'm glad that it's not taking place at All In because, truthfully, it's not an All In worthy match. And I discussed this with Jesse, with Jesse on Wednesday night when we talked about this live on Dynamite. If you guys missed that, you guys can go check it out. Fantastic discussion on Wednesday night. If you're not joining us on Wednesdays, I don't know what you're doing. I did not like this match taking place at All In because I don't feel like it's an All In worthy match. I don't. For 80,000, 90,000, however many thousands they're going to fit into Wembley Stadium, it's not worthy of an All In match. RVD has not been there at all. He has not shown him, himself, his face, to the AW audience in four years. This is their biggest show ever. You should be rewarding those that have built AEW for the four years that they've been there with getting a spot on their show. I do this with WWE, and now all of a sudden it's a problem with the AEW fan base, which means, to t- which means to me and tells me that there's a lot of dumb fucking idiots in the wrestling community that really don't give a shit about anything as long as they're fulfilled and they're pleased. I'm sorry somebody's got to bring the fucking bad news to you. I don't have a problem doing that. WWE gets away with it. I have a problem with it. I call them out. AEW does it. They are not going to get away with it because they should be doing everything that WWE is not doing and vice versa. Okay? AEW. They're going to use somebody like this to grab the casual audience. Tony Khan only has to worry about pay-per-view buys from now on. He's got that venue sold out. No doubt about it. He's got to worry about pay-per-view buys. He wants to tap into the casual wrestling audience. Oh, RVD is a WWE Hall of Famer. Oh, RVD. We know RVD. We're going to watch this show. What is he doing? Let me check this guy out over here working with this AEW. I've never seen AEW before. That's what he's going for. That's the vibe he's going for. But at the expense of taking a roster spot away from somebody else that should be on that show realistically. It's not an all-in match. He's taking a spot away from somebody. He's 52 years old. All-in is supposed to be a celebration of building up the company over the last four years. RVD has nothing to do with that. I don't want to see aging legends from ECW that's been dead for 23 years back on television. What is with this revitalizing ECW? We've seen this time and time and time again. It's been done to death. I'm over the ECW narrative. Let it die. Let it live in our hearts as a fond memory. Yet Tony Khan wants to trot these ECW legends out there. I don't get it. I don't understand it. I don't want to see it. And Jack Perry deserves better than that. The way you go about it is, if you wanted to do it at all out, fine. But they're doing it on dynamite. Good. I prefer that. I would have, I would have been accepting of it at all out. But I'm glad that we're getting it on Dynamite. Jack Perry versus Hook should be taking place at All In. Jack Perry should beat Hook at All In. If you want to do an ECW legend, do it at All Out. Whoever that may be, do it at All Out. Have that ECW legend beat Jack Perry for the FTW title and then have that ECW legend properly retire the title because it's not a recognized title in AEW. But if WWE does it and I call it out, I'm a fucking hater. If AEW does it, and brings in a fucking aging legend, and I don't like it, then I don't know what I'm talking about. I don't, I don't know. I mean, w- which, which is it? Some days I'm an AEW hater. Some days I'm an AEW shill on Tony Khan's payroll. When I like something about WWE, oh, you're turning your back on AEW. How can you like this garbage? I can't win. 
But if I call out something on WWE and I see AEW doing the same thing, why would you expect me not to call it out? I don't like it. It could be done better. Now, granted, I jumped the gun a little bit and I took what was said on Twitter as report and I should follow it up with, if it happens, instead of acting like, oh yeah, this is going to be. We got RVD, but it's not happening at all in. Great, it's happening on Dynamite. Keep it like that. One-off appearance, I'm okay with. Bringing in somebody like that for a major show, nah. Nah, I'm going to tell you that uh, we need to stay away from that. But I'm glad Tony Khan made the right decision, and RVD should not be on All In. Guys, thank you so very much for today's video. If you enjoyed the content today, please hit that thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button down below. Turn on the bell for all notifications. Go check out all the other content on the channel. Plenty of it for you. If there is news... I got you covered, man, right here on OTS. Join me live tonight for Friday Night SmackDown. And then tomorrow night, man, we will be live. The party will begin after SummerSlam with the the off-the-script SummerSlam post-show review. Until then, guys, enjoy your weeks. And I'll see you right back here for what's going to be a big weekend right here on Off The Script. I'll see you guys later.